Mantra. <laughs> Oops, wrong one. Mantra. I hope this works. Oh, by the way, you're seeing us already, but we're not seeing us yet. <clears throat> oh, you aren't? No, I mean, other people are seeing us, assuming that we're on it all. <laughs> <coughs> Hello? Are you going to make it? <laughs> Bonjour, amigos. Oh, looks like we're on. Whoa. We're officially on? Yep. Uh, so I see Super Happy, Bumblebee, Bandana, Robin, Michelle, Gar Galia goes, uh, Galena. Yes, hi, Galena. Um, and all kinds of others. Let me see about Facebook. We are on on Facebook. Hey, super Happy, Bumblebee. Yay, hooray. Okay. Mike's panic attack is only slightly over. <laughs> <laughs> So our disclaimer is we are having technical difficulties, the story of our live streams. So if we suddenly disappear, we may or may not make it back. <laughs> <laughs> so far it's looking okay, but if it... We may be doing it from the hospital for Mike's anxiety attack. <laughs> Yay! Uh, As he's blabbering. Blah, 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 blah. And if Dad has a heart attack... Joanne says, hi, Jill, my chocolate buddy. <laughs> Hi, Joanne. <laughs> All right. Uh, Denise I says, can't read any of your comments, guys, so Mike will just have to relay them to me, so I'm not ignoring you. Oops. Okay. We are going to get started right away today because I am horribly sick, and I don't know how much of this I'm going to be able to do, so I may have to step out and have Mike and Mom finish. <clears throat> but. Oh, India's asking, David, who is this? This is Tara's mom, Jill. In Kansas, and we're trying to do a remote Look. live remote with her, which we've done once before. <laughs> so, yes, this is Jill. So this is my mom, Jill. For those of you who don't know, her and I are both the authors of the Dining on a Dime cookbook. And today we are talking about how to have a traditional Thanksgiving dinner for 10 people for $25 or less. And actually, I got it down to like $23.50 or something. So I gave you even an extra like What? Fifty. Are you feeding those people? Aren't you proud of me? Yes. <laughs> but aren't you feeding those people? <laughs> <laughs> so Mom and I were actually working on the Thanksgiving leftovers article that's going to come out next week. And Mom was, she said, well, Thanksgiving dinner is one of the cheapest dinners you can make. It's like, I know. I don't understand why people think it's so expensive because it's not. Yeah. Everything is on sale. Thanksgiving week is the week that I stock up for everything. Turkeys, and they can be like 59 cents a pound. You can't get meat any cheaper, you know? Yeah. Gravy's free. You get the gravy from the turkey broth. Yeah. So, so <clears throat> I'm going <clears> to... <throat> I'm going to run through the list of the dinner, and then Mom's going to do a little bit of talking. A or a lot bit. of talking. Wait, are you talking talking to my mother-in-law? Yes. Aww. Aren't you lucky, Michael? I need your medication for that. Yes. Well, maybe you said 57 cents a pound for turkey. Yeah. I mean, I've seen it 49 and 39 cents a pound, but I did 69 cents a pound for our thing, for our list. Michael put a list. Michael put a link in there to the website, and this is all broken down. So what do you got? Turkey, sixty-nine cents a pound for fifteen pounds. I'm sharing that link right now. Traditional Thanksgiving recipes. It's around ten dollars for that, but you'll only use about seven dollars worth of turkey because you may even use as low as five. Because most people don't. They like turkey, but they don't eat a ton. Mm -hmm. And. So I'm accounting that you'll probably use your turkey for at least two more meals if you get a small 15-pound oh, yeah. one. If you yeah. get a large 25 to 30-pound one, you'll have meals for a couple of weeks, literally. And what I do is yeah. I just peel off the meat and freeze it in little packets, packets. of oil that I use from the turkey when I then cover use the bones turkey. to make soup, which will last mm -hmm. for two or three meals. So anyway, we're just assuming one meal which is about five to seven dollars. Mm -hmm. Stuffing about fifty cents you can make that for pretty much free. Gravy twenty five cents but you can make it for pretty much free. 
homemade dinner rolls, 50 cents, but if you really need to buy them store-bought, you could do that for two dollars. Mashed potatoes, I'm going high on a dollar fifty, but you can do it for about a dollar. A broccoli salad, which is two dollars. I'm sharing that link again for you guys, and if you're on YouTube and you can't find it, it's also in the description. Yeah. Um, and then deviled eggs for a dollar. <clears throat> Jello salad for a dollar fifty. Sweet potato casserole for two dollars. A chocolate homemade pie for two dollars. A pumpkin homemade pie for two dollars. And iced tea for twenty-five cents. So that whole entire thing is less than twenty-five dollars, and it will feed ten people, and it'll feed them quite well, actually. <clears throat> so, my tip before. I let mom start talking back to the turkey <laughs> is um, I mom had this idea but she cuts has the butcher cut the turkey in half and it's like a big chicken but it's cheaper than chicken and I think it's tastier than chicken myself I like turkey better than chicken mm -hmm. myself so I'll go and get six or eight turkeys and have the butcher cut them in half small turkeys and I have the butcher cut them in half and then put them in my freezer and I will cook a turkey dinner every 10 days or so for a couple of months and it's delicious we love it um the other thing is I save the foil after I roast the turkey and I make little packets where I will put the turkey with the gravy and sometimes if I have left mashed potatoes left over all in that little packet and then put it in a freezer bag and all I have to do is just stick it in the oven at 350 degrees and warm it up for half an hour and I dinner is done literally 30 seconds for dinner <clears throat> so that's one of the ways that I save for um, doing turkey so we're gonna start on mom's list here we had a couple oh. of quick questions uh, Lisa was asking how can you do that because she says because a turkey costs $20 or more okay so first of all one turkey isn't one meal I don't know of one yeah. single person that has used the entire turkey for just um, that meal, mm -mm. ever. Oh, no. Yeah. And so, first of all, I'm accounting that you're going to get three or four meals out of that. Yeah. But if it's $20, then I only am counting the amount of meat that I would use for that meal because I'm using meat for other meals. Okay? Yeah. So, does that make sense? Yeah, and the same way with the broccoli salad. You maybe wouldn't need to use all the broccoli, all the cauliflower that you buy for that. You can use half of it and use for other meals, too. Now, these mm -hmm. prices that you're talking about, these are the prices making it homemade, right? Making it homemade on sale for Thanksgiving week. But these are prices that I have seen in Colorado, Kansas, and Idaho. And they are all over. I mean, I've lived 20, well, we've been married 23 years. And these are prices that I see every single year, so... And you figured turkey is 69 cents a pound for this calculation, right? Because somebody's asking, yeah. where did you find it for 29? But I think they're talking to somebody else. Yeah. So, yeah, somebody else found it for 29 the other day, they were telling us. So and Angela and wants to clarify, you did say the butcher cuts frozen turkeys in half. Some butchers do. Now, not all of them. So when I was in Kansas, I got, got them cut all the time. In Colorado, mm -hmm. it's not so easy. They don't want to do it as much. In Idaho, they did it in Kansas but here in Colorado they don't want to do it as much so you may have to ask a couple of butchers yeah. and I would just get on the phone <clears throat> and call and ask several butchers I mean if you only have one grocery store fine but most places well, another like thing, us you know another thing now too it used to be you could only get the cheapest price for a 20 22 pound turkey and that's when I started cutting it in two now I can actually find 10 pound turkeys you know, for a cheap, the same cheap price, so you wouldn't even maybe have to have it cut in, in half, you know. So you need to consider that, too. Okay, so, Mom, go for it. You want me to go for it? First of all, if this is your first time doing Thanksgiving dinner, if you're a newbie at this, just relax. Take a deep breath and relax. Breathe through your nose. <laughs> yes, it is kind of scary if you're going to have the whole family over for the first time and you're thinking, how do you get it all together? How do you um, get it all done? What if something goes wrong? Uh, one thing is prep. Do as much ahead of time as you can. I'm going to give a couple of tips of what you can do ahead of time, but get as much done ahead of time. And, you know, this is, should be your family and friends. They should care about you, and so you shouldn't have to worry about it that much. But 
One other thing is, chances are, and this sounds pessimistic, but something will probably happen. I mean, it. They all. It's just life. Things happen. Taurus flatted her turkey, you know, right before she was getting ready to put it on the table. What a year before last or something? I mean, she just dropped it and splatted it on the floor. But instead of panicking over these things, look at them as memory-making Thanksgivings because. Those are the Thanksgiving everybody's going to laugh about and talk about and remember for years to come. You know, if the rolls burn, don't panic. Cut the bottoms, the black off the bottoms, and throw the, the <coughs> rolls back in, you know, in the basket and not worry about it. Just laugh about it. Everybody likes muffin tops anyway, so you just have I was dinner gonna roll tops. I was just going to say that nobody likes the bottom of the rolls anyway, so, you know, they're going to enjoy the name. it. Huh? My motto is just change the name. Yeah, <laughs> just change the name. You know, if something happens to one of the dishes, well, maybe you won't serve it. Don't worry about it. I had a really close friend the first year I went to serve my first Thanksgiving dinner. I was terrified. And she said, she told me a story about how the first time she made Thanksgiving dinner, she put the turkey up on the refrigerator for a second while she was using that area of countertop right before she set everything on the table. Sat down, they all ate the dinner, everybody was laughing, talking, enjoying the meal. And about three quarters through the dinner, she found out she forgot to put the turkey on the table. It was still on top of the refrigerator. You know, either everybody was really polite or they didn't notice it was missing, you know, from the picture here. But she just laughed about it. And it made me feel so much better to think that things happen. So just relax when, you, relax when you're getting ready to do this dinner, you know. Um, you don't have... You need me for something? <laughs> <laughs> when you're waving like that, it's like, wait, what? So, um, we got a comment. Where are you living that you get piece, cheap prices like this? I've never seen prices this cheap. Okay. Here's the disclaimer, guys. Again, if you're in England. San Francisco. Well, first of all, if you're in England, you're not going to even be celebrating for Thanksgiving. So, anyway, we'll just knock that one off the list. But <laughs> Or Canada, for that matter. But if you're in Canada, or if you're in New York City, or San Francisco or LA, yes, your prices are gonna be higher. Just go with what the cheapest is at well, um, well, for, and, for you. Stop the, worrying about prices so much and do what you can for the you. The best you can, the best that you yeah. can. Well, yeah, I think what Tara's saying is that <clears throat> the $25 number, don't obsess over that because if, if your price on everything else is 10 times higher and it costs you $40, then you're still saving a bunch of money over not doing that. Right? Yeah. If so. you if you listen, if Tar just falls off the camera every once in a while, don't panic anybody. <laughs> She's just having a choking spell. <laughs> Sorry, daughter. Um, but the thing is, the tips we give you, whether you can be exactly on $25 or not, the tips and ideas we're going to be giving you, you can use wherever you are. And use those to the best of your ability, and you'll still have a less expensive Thanksgiving than you would have. And that's why right? we wrote Dining on a Dime. It is the principles behind this. So mm -hmm. if you can only get turkey for a dollar a pound, then do that. You know, yeah. but that was the whole point of Dining on a Dime, is to teach people how to cook and use what they have where they are. Do the best you can with what you have. So, yes. so... Start, mm -hmm. just wave your hand at me if you need me to stop for a comment, Michael, okay? Um, so <laughs> <laughs> just testing you. <laughs> <laughs> You're just wanting to see if I was paying attention, huh? Yes. Keep the, keep the meal simple. Step away from Pinterest. Walk away from Pinterest. Don't look at Pinterest between now and Thanksgiving. What happens is you see all these exotic recipes they look so good and yummy and you want to do them and mm -hmm. it's not going to work on a $25 budget and you may have to give them up this year if you're seriously thinking about saving money then you can't have the most expensive of everything you know you've got to really just step back and realize you're going to have to have just the turkey mashed potatoes and grapes and you know what half the time the kids and the husbands and people they don't really care. They love, that's what they love about Thanksgiving is the turkey <laughs> gravy and mashed potatoes and the, the classic uh, sweet potato casserole and those types of things. So don't even look at Pinterest right now. Try to stay away from it. It's not good to start uh, trying a new recipe anyway 
when you're having company over. And so don't make the meal elaborate. Who's peeking back there? Is that Ellie Jean? Hi, my love. <laughs> oh, she's getting ready for parkour, isn't she? Please love don't you. break anything tonight. I know. So anyway, so, uh, you know, you don't want to do those fancy recipes. They get expensive ingredients. Uh, let's say you're going to do, you can't buy papaya and mango and fresh almonds strawberries or coconuts that you have to cut that's in the shell yourself you know and then buy a, make all the ingredients for poppy seed dressing to go on top of it and expect to stay within your budget you can do those at some time when you got the money to do them but right now is not the time you're going to have to find you know you're going to have to make a fruit salad that calls for a couple of apples a couple of bananas Sprinkle a little sugar on, oranges, a little can of mandarin oranges or something, and stir it. Your family's going to like it. You know, they use, really are going to. Use walnuts instead of cons. Use the walnut. Oh, wait. Well, wait till I get to the pot, pot, con pot part. Oh, I about had a heart attack. But So you need to refocus. You can't do the elaborate, expensive ingredients. You can't. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> How am I supposed to yeah. keep going here, guys? This you're could doing... be fun, not talking. <laughs> I know, it's killing Michael, isn't it? Um, you know, the more spices you have to buy, the more nuts, the more elaborate stuff, the more expensive your bill is going to get. Um, another thing is do things like, speaking of a cons, now I'm going to give these examples, but if Great, 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 great grandma always served a pecan pie at your Thanksgiving dinner. And that's a tradition, and your family would excommunicate you if you didn't serve your pecan pie. Then you need to save money in another area and make your pecan pie. But if your family could really care less, whether you have pumpkin pie or pecan pie, go with the cheaper version. You know, I looked at nuts or pecans yesterday. They were six dollars a bag at Aldi. Uh, yes, <coughs> I know. Somebody Is that wanted not... us to do a pecan pecan pie show on Friday, and I was going to do it, but I ain't going to do it now because we don't even eat pecan pie. It was it was just mind boggling. Now they might go on sale, but I I couldn't believe it when I saw those. And so you know you may have to give up that pecan pie. And make a pumpkin pie, or like Tara's recipe calls for a chocolate pie. Chocolate pudding, you can make it from scratch, or just use a couple of cheap boxes of chocolate pudding. Sprinkle a handful of chocolate chips, not a whole bag of chocolate chips because they're expensive. Just take a couple of handfuls and mix in with the chocolate pie. Add a little bit of whipped cream, and you're good to go, you know. And so that's a cheaper version over the pecan pie. Apple pies, I stopped. <laughs> Or yesterday, I found the mini Hershey candy bars on clearance for Halloween for 70% off. So go grab those and use those instead of chocolate chips. Yes, if you've got any chocolate left over from Halloween, just <coughs> top of that and sprinkle it on top of your uh, chocolate pie or mix it in with the chocolate a little bit. My son's family, that's what they love better than anything. So go with the flow. I think we put too much pressure on ourselves thinking our families want something elaborate when they really don't need it. Another thing is you could do maybe if you're having, say, 10 people come over and five are adults and five are kids. And I'm just using the example. You may be having four adults and six kids, but this is an example that I'm using. Okay, the adults will pro But this will feed 10 adults. Oh, okay. Yeah, it will. So uh, take and... The adults will probably eat pies. Usually they prefer that. Kids, half the time kids don't really, they could care less, whether it's pie or cookies. So make up some sugar cookies. Those are cheaper to make than a, than a pie, you know. So substitute things like that. So then you only have to make maybe two pies to feed the five adults. And you can do the rest in cookies instead of making three pies. And you'll be saving, you know, a little bit doing stuff like that. Um, let's see, what else was... Oh, and Tara mentioned the deviled eggs. When you have sides dishes, throw in have inexpensive side dishes like deviled eggs. The um, green bean casserole can be relatively inexpensive. It's not too bad, you know. Um, or just have simple corn on the cob. 
Most families love those types of things. Casserole. Yeah. And you can take the, the corn on the cob. Don't do the big, well, I'll get into portion control in a little bit. But, you know, you can do more simple. And if somebody asks you, can I bring something, say yes, thank you. Uh, another way, if you if you really can't swing it all by yourself, call Aunt Susie and say, <coughs> oh, I didn't mean to say you, Susie, if you're on here tonight. <laughs> but call <laughs> Aunt so-and-so and say, you know, you make the best dinner rolls. Would you mind bringing some dinner rolls? And of course she's going to bring them. So, you know, do, don't be afraid to do things like that and ask for help. So um, flatter people, even if they don't make the best dinner rolls, at least you don't have what? to go back. What? I said so flatter people, even if they don't make the best dinner rolls, you won't have to cook. <laughs> yeah, get them to bring your dinner rolls, yeah. Yes. Yeah, um, but that's another thing. If you, Mom, if that's another thing, if you know someone makes something good, ask that person to specifically bring their good dish that they bring. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm meaning. You know, if you know that they do it. And, you know, most people like bringing and showing off their dish. I mean, not showing off. I don't know of another word. But you're kind of proud if you have a dish that you want others to, you know, taste and stuff. So another thing is to learn. Learn to cook. Learn to make your own it's almost too late now to learn to bake a pie between now and Thanksgiving. I'm not sure you'd be able to get it down pat. Two but weeks. Yeah, two weeks. Yeah, you'd have to do several between now and then. But you can do things like if maybe you can't make the pie crust, it's okay to buy a bought and pie crust, and they go on sale for really cheap, you know, if you want to. Now, I don't personally like them too well, but a lot of people eat them. But even one step further, if you don't want to do that, mix up the pumpkin pie recipe on the can, butter the casserole dish, slap it in a <laughs> slap it in a casserole dish <clears throat> and put some whipped cream on top of it and slob won't even notice the pie crust is missing. Half the people don't eat the pie crust anyway. Just call it a pumpkin custard. Yeah, yeah. You know It's all about so the marketing. <laughs> <laughs> so that's cheaper. And you don't, and I'm doing that in comparison to going to the grocery store and paying eight bucks for a pot. You know, that's how you, these are the ways you can save on doing things. So somebody said, am I the only one who doesn't really like pie? No. So no. make what you want. You could make ice cream. Who cares? Make sugar cookies. I have people buy my gingerbread men and that's what they have at their Thanksgiving dinner. They love it, you know, because people don't eat pie. My kids wouldn't eat pies. I made three pies every Thanksgiving and Christmas until it dawned on me they weren't eating them. I was the only one eating them. What was I thinking of? You know, doing? Oh. Yeah, Michael? There's, there's somebody who made a comment here that I was wondering if we should read. Just because Amy was saying my mom used to cook for a week beforehand. We had Chex Mix and five different sweetbreads and pies and then the meal. And you know what? No one noticed. We were all stuffed in the first 20 minutes and we were stuck with all those leftovers for weeks. She says, it's taken it, me years to realize it's not always about the food, but the company. The company, exactly. I was going to touch on that, that having huge mounds and stuff like that. Well, and that, you can make it up ahead of time. You don't have to do it all right on Thanksgiving Day. I think people No, think that's what I was talking about. You need to do as much as you can. And, <clears throat> and the next thing I was going to talk about is relish dish. Don't pay $20 for a relish platter of carrot sticks and celery. I'm thinking that's insane. You can clean those that, those vegetables up three days ahead of time and let, put them in water. And then come Thanksgiving Day, just set them on the tray. You don't need to learn to cut your own vegetables. Don't pay $20 for a vegetable tray. I mean, seriously. It's frightfully and, expensive to buy those pre-cut. Oh, oh, yeah, it's horrible. I just and, it, That drives me crazy. And another thing, when you make a relish tray in order to save... Don't put expensive vegetables on there like broccoli or cauliflower or, you know, things like that. Special <laughs> mushrooms you had flown in from Norway. I mean, you know, <laughs> that type of thing. So just use carrots, use celery. Um, I like to put my olives and uh, I get olives pretty inexpensive from Aldi. And uh, pickles, sweet pickles, and just spread it out on the tray. I take the green the greenery stuff from the celery, you don't need to buy special parsley to decorate your dishes. I just take the greenery from the celery and stick it <laughs> on a relish dish to make it look nice. And I'll get into decorating a little bit in a second too. But 
you know, that doesn't cost anything, and that's an inexpensive relish dish. Um, another thing, oh, I just lost my train of thought. We were talking about the relish dish. Oh, you know, uh, what Amy was saying about she'd make the Chex Mix and all this, you don't need to have five dips to go with your relish dish. As a matter of fact, at Thanksgiving and Christmas, I do no dips. Well, not at Christmas, I'm sorry. At Thanksgiving, I do no dips with my relish dish because it's a heavy meal. You can get, nowadays, the dips has cheese and all kinds of vegetables and olives and sausages and all this stuff in, mixed into a dip. It's a full meal in and of itself. You're having a heavy meal. People will nibble on this dip before the meal, and then, like Amy said, you're too full to eat the meal. So don't even have a dip. If your family will bulk and rebel if you don't have a dip, get a bowl of ranch, um, a little crystal bowl, pretty little bowl, some kind of fancy little bowl. Get your bottle of ranch drip dressing squeezed in there, and they're going to think they're getting a fancy dip. And just if you have to use that, you know, and it's less expensive than buying all the dip ingredients. Does that make sense, Sergeant? Um, dressing. Okay, dressing should be almost free. It's almost too late now to start, although you could get some. I start <coughs> going cough and choke. I start now, and I get use um, a bread bag, an empty bread bag that I have. Keep it in the freezer, and then you know those hot dog buns? You have that one hot dog bun. You have that one hamburger bun, that one piece of cornbread. Uh, some families don't like the heels of the bread. We do. I eat them, love them for toast. But you have the heels of the bread, you know, those two or three slices of bread that are just, I mean, hard, rock, dry. Stick them in that bag. And then you've got all the bread you need for your stuffing. And you can use that. And you don't even need to buy anything uh, for the bread croutons or something. Now, sometimes I will buy a small bag of croutons just to throw in for the seasoning part. But you don't have to. So that's another way to save by using all this leftover dried up bread. Do you have, do you need me to stop, Michael? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. Can I do something? So, so, and you know, another thing, do that all year long because you can have stuffing for dinner throughout the year. And it's, it, it's almost free. And it's an inexpensive filling thing to have. Drinks is the next, next thing. Um, <laughs> Like Tara said, have tea and water. Just have tea, water, and maybe if you want to have coffee for dessert or hot tea and coffee, you know, with the desserts or something. <coughs> I think this is one of the big, big, biggest expenses that people um, do for their meal. Uh, they buy the pop. Then what happens is people drink the pop while they're just standing around waiting for the meal to be put on the table. And they get filled up on it, especially the kids. And you've got to be very, very careful because then they'll pile their their plates full of food, sit down, and now everybody's drinking more pop at the table, and they're full. So, uh, you know, just stick with water. Oh, and here's a tip. Take a glass. Why are you guys laughing? Mike's moving the screen around trying to fix something while you're talking. We're hoping you don't go away. <laughs> no. Well, somebody was asking about why there are the black lines on the top and bottom, and I didn't realize I had it set in a weird way. But they're a little uh, bit black on the top and bottom because we can't all fit the screen together. Michael was staring at me so intently, and I thought, he's not wanting to learn, listen to his mother-in-law that closely, <laughs> so I couldn't figure out what he was doing. Yes. Um, so, like, if you serve him with just water or tea for your dinner... Put it in a, a stem goblet, you know, pull out the stops for your nice dishes. Kids think that is so cool even to drink water out of a fancy glass. And they, they don't notice they're not drinking, you know, something elaborate, some kind of... And you can get those at the thrift store for like 50 cents. They don't have to... Oh, well, match, the goblets? Know. Yeah, you can. If you don't have any, you can and get they don't those. Have to match. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, and so we don't drink, So I, I, but I do have a set of skin glasses that go with my uh, uh, dishes. Another thing to do, um, we don't have any questions yet. Well, Coco Noel says that she likes the sweet decor behind you. <laughs> she likes the what? The sweet decor behind you. 
Oh, my, my pumpkin. Somebody, <laughs> somebody else said that you look like the great... Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Somebody <laughs> else said they like your... My daughter said I looked like the great Charlie Brown pumpkin tonight. I'm joking. Uh, I should have no. dyed my hair green. They said they loved your sweater. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, so the other thing is... Um, oh, like... He's now moving off of beverages, but like I was talking about the fruit salad earlier, not buying the expensive fruits or compared to the other. But also you can take and um, do things like Tar said, have a broccoli salad, which is great. Once again, you've got the five adults. Probably they're the only ones that will be eating the broccoli salad more so than the kids. So only fix enough for five people of the broccoli salad. That's all you have to buy ingredients for. And then for the kids, make the kids and Michael make <laughs> lime salad or orange jello. I mean, orange jello or lime jello. You know, just plain old lime jello. That costs <laughs> almost nothing to make. And the kids and Michael would love it. So, you know, <laughs> hassle you. Michael loves lime jello. I just love I mean, jello at all. Jello is. Jello and I we are went, like peas and carrots. <laughs> I remember the first time we went to a buffet, all you can eat buffet, it was a, we were celebrating something. And Tar and I are piling our plates with the meat and all this yummy stuff, you know. And here comes Michael with lime jello and fried chicken. I'm thinking, no, you get the expensive stuff here, Michael, not the lime jello. Where? So. At, at the buffet? Oh, At yeah. Granny's. Remember in Idaho, we went there. So. Yes, it was pretty awesome. So, now the other, oh, two more things. And one of the things is decorate. Try to decorate your table nicely. It doesn't cost to go out and chop a few bushes down or chunk some bushes or something. Pick up some pine cones. <laughs> well, Are you sure you have permission or you're in a park where nobody sees you? That's true. <laughs> well, I'm talking about your backyard, your own backyard. <laughs> But, well, you can see, I have my little scarecrow do up, dude up there, you know, right there. You can set him with some green stuff and <coughs> pine cones. Hi, Jack. Oh, I get to see you. I love you. Look at that handsome face. He gets his good looks from his nan, don't you? But <laughs> I love you. But, you know, you can look what you have around the house and just decorate Put a couple of candles on there, and they won't notice if your meal is a little bit sparse this year for whatever reason. Uh, if you ever notice you go to these expensive restaurants, I tell you, they I haven't been to one lately. I've only seen them on TV, but they take on the plate, and they put this little tiny portion of food, and they squirt all kinds of pretty soft stuff all over it. So you've got nothing. I mean, you've just got this little thing. They're doing the decorating, which makes trying to make you think you've got something really elaborate and fancy. What are you laughing about, Tara? Okay, so if you guys saw red light on the wall, that was a laser. Dave was dinking around. I just said it's probably the kids messing around. Dave Notice how is, we didn't even flinch. <laughs> Dave is behind the camera, and he's got a silly laser, so just ignore him. I'm sorry. We cannot control the chaos around here. We just can't. I'm sorry. Before we started, he was hanging his head over the top of the computer, so all that I could see was his hair across the top of the computer. But we've got our own comedians over there. So, you know, think on the fruit salad. Think we got a red jello salad too on the on the website that's really yummy and it's inexpensive it inexpensive. It uses like applesauce and cherry jello and that, so it's a little bit cheaper. So start looking at different things. Did he need to ask you something, Mom? No, go ahead and finish. I'll tell you uh, this minute when you're done. With so you know, uh, so think of things like this. You don't have to have elaborate ingredients. Did you want to tell him first before I finish up here? Oh, well, Jack's here. Right? <coughs> they have a joke. Oh, okay. Tell what the did, joke and then I'll... What did the mama corn say to the baby corn? I don't know. What? Where's popcorn? <laughs> <laughs> I thought Jack would appreciate that. <laughs> that's a perfect one for for Dave, isn't it? Oh, that's Jack good. and Grandma says that's one cute little whispering taste tester right there. <laughs> uh, 
I am so lucky I got the sweetest grandkids, and they're good looking too. Uh, now, I'm going to talk about portion control on Thanksgiving dinner. I know this is going to blow. I know. Can you? But yeah. Michael's turn face off. says it Turn her off quickly. Turn her off. Turn me off quickly. <laughs> portion control. I mean, there is no way you can have portion control on Thanksgiving dinner. But what I'm talking about for portion control is if you're trying to cut back a little bit and save money, when you get your desserts, cut them into, you know, like your pie into certain sections, your cake, cut your cake up before you set it out to serve it. Don't let everybody serve themselves because what happens is you've got a 10 year old that will go over there if you lay the knife out and they'll cut their own piece and they'll take a quarter of the pie, slap it on their plate, eat three bites and the rest goes in the trash. So cut the, cut the, things in their own and serve the kids' plates yourself. Don't let the kids pile their own plates, even with everything. That was going to be my next tip. Sorry. So, so, well, that's fine. So that way, if they want more, they can go back and get a second piece, but you're not wasting food that way. But designate somebody, an adult, to be at the kids, not to sit at the kids' table, but be close to the kids' table, and even <coughs> if you possibly can, serve them, you know, and put the, the helpings on their plates because the kids can get really carried away and mound every, the adults, maybe we should designate one for the adult table too, right, Michael? Yes. <laughs> no, but you know, you can help them, they can have all they want, but there's no use to mound all the food on there and then just throw it in the trash type of thing. Um, then the last thing I'm going to cover is um, now is the best time to stock up on tons of stuff for the whole year. You may not be able to do it this year but uh, as much if you don't have the money to, but starting... From now on, save $10 a month, if you can, $20 in, in a special place, and come Thanksgiving next year, stock up for a whole year on things like, Tar mentioned the turkeys, uh, cranberry sauce goes on sale. It, you, you're allowed to have cranberry sauce other days besides Thanksgiving. It's really good with at Easter with ham. We've got that. We've got a, what is it, uh, a recipe on... I don't know if we got, I think the recipe's in the book and maybe on the website, both for the cranberry sauce where you put cloves and mustard in it and everything like that. That's really good to have with ham, so this would be good to serve for Easter. So get a couple of extra cans of cranberry sauce. Um, it's, another, on page, uh, it's on page 308. 308. 308. <laughs> got it. Uh, stock up on pumpkin. Pumpkin's really cheap right now. Baking supplies. You can get chocolate chips, flour, sugar, brown sugar, powdered sugar, uh, all kinds of spices. They've got spices totally on sale and things like that. Stock up on all of those things, you know, right now. And get your spices at a bulk place instead of buying the little containers of McCormick. It's a lot cheaper. Yeah, yeah. Buy them in bulk when you can. And so do that. Pie crust. Now, I I don't like to buy rotten pie crust, but if you like them, I saw them for fifty cents after Thanksgiving one time. Stock up on them. They they freeze really good. You can keep them in the freezer. To, and those were really would be really good too for after Thanksgiving, after Christmas, to make use your left turkey leftovers, make turkey pot pie, you know, with them, and and things like that. Um, Cream soups is another thing, like cream of mushroom soup, cream of chicken soup. They put those on sale because people make the green bean casserole, so you can get those. I saw that I don't use them that much. The French fried, uh, the fried um, French onions is that what they're called? <laughs> They've got those on sale at this time. And you're so a couple containers, yeah, you, you know, them. for the. You love them. What? You like them? Michael? I do like those French fried onions, yes. Yeah. So, you know, look at all these things. And even some of the snack foods and stuff, you can save those 
they're starting to go on like in January for New Year's. Those will go on sale, so stock up. And one last thing is whipped cream. Whipped cream is usually on sale for really, really cheap. It will keep in the freezer for like eternity, you know. And butter. And butter. Butter goes on. Yeah, butter's a good one. I'm not kissing you, Michael, or you guys. I'm kissing Ellie. <laughs> you know, you. it's that moment when you realize this is your circus and these are your monkeys. <laughs> oh, should I ask My a question about the portion free. control? <laughs> what, Michael? What wonderful blessed life is wondering how to portion control an adult. She said, or said I have a grown man that at Thanksgiving and Christmas eats so much and then whines for days. Tell him, suck it up. You did it to yourself. Yeah, yeah. I've learned as I've gotten older not to eat nearly as much because I just don't like that feeling. Yeah, you know, talking, this is kind of off the subject a little bit. I shouldn't do this, but talking about whining for days. I wrote, I think I put an article. It's on under the Thanksgiving articles. On Go to our website. I'm not trying to push the website so much, but yes, you I are. see your laser, Dave. Oh, I am. I am pushing it. We have a ton of really good <laughs> articles on Thanksgiving on the website. Um, and I don't think people realize the gold mine that is on our website because we can't even begin to cover the information we have in the cookbook and on the website on these live streams. We have got tons of information. But I got onto that because when she was talking about whining for days, you know, be thankful this Thanksgiving. <laughs> Really, I didn't know if Tara's going to have me on again before this, but I wanted to say this. Often we, I hear people say, you know, we go around and say one thing we're thankful for, or we put in a jar one thing we're thankful for, which is really nice on Thanksgiving to do. But learn to be thankful all the time. You know, keep it up. I, in the article, I said something about thank, thankfulness and contentment are twins. Because if you're thankful then you're usually content. And if you're content, it's usually because you're so thankful for things. So, you know, make it a practice. I, I wanted to say this because one year close to Thanksgiving, I was went to was driving to the grocery store, and I pulled up to a stop sign, and I drive old clunkers usually. You know, I really do. And I'm happy with them, and I'm not car proud. It doesn't matter to me. I don't never really, really want a car, a fancy car or anything, but... I was at this stop sign, and this cute little car pulled up. I thought, oh, my goodness, that is a really cute car. And I thought, I would love to have a new car like that sometime. You know, I just never had a new car. I thought that would be kind of cool. and was going on in my mind about this cool car. And I took off. God sometimes just hits me upside the head, which I probably need, you know, to get my attention. Because then I take off from the stoplight, and over on the sidewalk next to me was this really old elderly man walking with a cane and the wind was blowing and you guys got to know what a Kansas wind I mean 30 miles an hour here is like a breeze Chicago so this has nothing on Kansas and yeah Colorado. and this little old man with his cane was struggling trying to make it to the bus stop and I could see the bus coming in my rear view mirror and he was struggling along with his cane and I thought it was like God said, and you're griping because you don't have a brand new car, you know? And then I, I must have been having a roll, been on a roll that day for some reason because then I walked to the grocery, went into the grocery store, and here was all this food because I was whining about having to go to the grocery store, you know, and what am I going to get, and I don't know what to have. And I stepped in there, and here we I had the beautiful grocery store. Christmas music was playing or something like that, you know, really pretty music. It was clean, thousands of items to choose from. And I thought, here I stand whining and complaining because I got to figure out a menu and figure out what to get again for my grocery list. So be careful. Establish a Thanksgiving, not just for Thanksgiving Day, you know, and stuff like that. So now, do you think I covered everything, Tara, that you want me to cover, or do we have any questions? Or were you, were you talking about being thankful in general, or <laughs> thankful for uh, around Thanksgiving? I, I was distracted no, by comments. No, I was talking about don't just be thankful at Thanksgiving all the time. Be thankful, you know. Don't just make Thanksgiving. Well, what's funny is, I, I think a lot of people really need to re-examine 
thankful too because <coughs> I had this as bad as Tara has it now two weeks ago and I was feeling pretty bad and I thought, you know, I could be in some other part of the world where I don't live in a comfortable house, in a comfortable mm-hmm. bed with a bathroom. And, Access to medicine. And, mm-hmm. I, and I could be sicker than that in a place where I'm in a mud hut. And yeah. so even when I feel terrible and I'm sick, I have to think, oh, you know what? I still have a lot of blessings here. So, sorry. Well, that's well I was box. popping like popping pills. That sounds terrible. I was had some medicine I was taking. And there was like three pills. And I thought, I'm so tired of taking these pills. And then I stopped because I thought, I am so grateful that I live someplace <laughs> where I can get these pills, you know, to make me healthy and to keep going. But you might try sometime, since this is close to Thanksgiving, take 30 minutes. And I don't think we realize how much we whine and, and complain about things. And check off in 30 minutes time. Pay attention to what you're thinking of how many times you complain about, oh, I'm cold or, oh, I'm too hot or this water doesn't taste right. You know, just be thankful you have some water you can drink and write down a list. Compare that then to that same 30 minutes, how many times you said something about being thankful, you know, for something. So, <laughs> My phone isn't cooperating. <laughs> My phone isn't cooperating. No, no, I'm saying. Oh, your phone's not cooperating. It's complaining that your phone's yeah. not cooperating. Like. <laughs> yeah. Do we have any questions at all, or does everybody have it down pat for Thanksgiving? Well, I was kind of getting a lot of things as we went. Uh, do you want to look back through these? Uh, Shirley wants to know where to get a lot of cloves. Um, look on Amazon or eBay. You need get a, a lot big of what? Cloves. Oh. Like, probably she's doing oranges or something. You could probably get yeah. them on Amazon or eBay, probably. Uh, a lot of people were talking about having asking people to bring drinks for their family, and some people were talking about. I think you mentioned this earlier, but uh, bringing uh, like a side dish or something like that. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. part of that. Um, Jamie was saying pudding goes farther if you mix it with Cool Whip and tastes super yummy. Put in fancy glasses and guests will think it's special. <laughs> okay, what's your joke? Oh, that's oh. another thing. Oh, go ahead, Jack. So, knock knock. Who's there? Cow say. Cows say who? No, they don't. Cows say moo. Oh. <laughs> so, Melissa, and you didn't I didn't. Up, didn't you? Melissa, I assume. I'm, oh. Oh, go ahead, Michael. Melissa, I assume you're still out there, but I was going to ask Jack that joke for you. She wanted to know, Jack, what do you get when you cross a lake and a river? I don't know. Mm. Any clue? We'll have to see. I what have the a guess. I'm going to wait till Jack says it. What do you think it is? I I'm going to say you get tired. <laughs> so tell me if that's true. <laughs> uh, okay. But another thing, too, to save on the whipped cream, I guess I didn't finish on that part. Uh, like if you have a pumpkin pie, instead of slathering the whole thing, whole top of it, or let everybody serve big clumps of whipped cream... Just take, like Tar used in the bag on her, if you saw Monday night when she was squirting the, the little dollops around on her chocolate pie, you can save a little bit by taking the co- container cool whip and then just squeezing the dollops or putting a little small dollop on the pie. And that way you can use the other half of the container in your fruit salad. So instead of buying two containers of uh, whipped cream, you know, to use one for the pie and one for the fruit salad, you can stretch it a little bit by just putting a little bit of uh, whipped cream on your pie and things, Bye, and not having everybody serve a big old doll. Go ahead, Michael. Oh, I was just saying goodbye to Ellie. Sorry. Oh. But was there other questions? Uh, Aga loves Conwali says, I love everything that you're saying, Ms. Jill. You're a very wise woman. Many people forget what the holiday is about and waste so much food and complain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we do waste Actually, a lot. A lot of people are saying they're really glad to see you on. So. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I feel so weird over here because I can't really talk proper to everybody. Yeah. And a lot of people are saying, giving us remedy ideas for Tara. And thank you. A lot of honey and putting um, stuff on your feet, <laughs> different things like that. So I've tried it all. Yeah. Uh, let's but see. thank you. I'm just going to look and see if we have any newer questions. And then I can look through the old ones again. Uh all right, go ahead. One thing um, on the turkey, if you need to defrost it beforehand, you have to defrost your turkey. You can't just pull it out of the freezer and put it... Well, you can, actually. I do that all the time. <laughs> but 
But <coughs> but well, you need to defrost it for every four pounds. You need to defrost it 24 hours. But if you don't have room in your fridge and you live in a cold climate, you can put it out in the garage in a cooler or outside in a cooler as long as the temperature is below 40 degrees. Here in Colorado, we do that all the time. That's pretty much the only way I defrost my turkey. And also with the leftovers, if you live in a climate where it is cooler, put your leftovers outside in a cooler or put them in the garage. <clears throat> and that's a good way to store the leftovers without having to find a Well, and too, fridge. a lot of times for the actual dinner itself, I'll have things like a fruit salad, uh, even the jello salad, and my garage is cold enough in the winter that uh, sometimes that I can just set the things out there until I'm ready to put them on the table because I don't have room in the refrigerator for everything. Yeah. Um, Donna said, when I was young, my mom used to tell us this saying, I cried because I had no shoes, and then I saw a man who had no feet. And Yeah. And I think that's interesting because that's what I was talking about. When you're really sick and you feel awful, you think, man, at least you're sick in America or mm -hmm. England mm -hmm. or Australia or somewhere. And, and that's part of training your mind, Michael. You, we need to start training our mind to automatically, when we start to complain, we need to think something positive about what we do have and what we're grateful for. I had air this morning. Uh, I tried to breathe and I had air this morning. You had me this morning. I had you this morning. Even oh. though I was coughing, keeping you up all night, you had me. I was still here. Yeah, I know, and I was able to pay attention to you because you were coughing. <laughs> 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 oh, a Coco Noel here. Wait, which shocked face? <laughs> <laughs> I hope I did that long enough. Was that the shocked face? Yeah, yeah. Tracy says many people spend holidays alone. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll probably be by myself this year at Thanksgiving. But, you know, even at that, that's, again, twisting something around to make, I love being by myself on Thanksgiving. The positive side is I don't have to do any dishes. I don't have to do any cooking, you know. I, I can have a whole guilt-free day of not working or doing anything, curl up with a good book or watch all the Christmas movies on TV or something. Even if you're going to be alone, you know, you can make it what you want it to be. Now, I'm not totally lonely because I have everybody calling me, you know, during the day, wishing me happy Thanksgiving and everything. So rather, I am blessed with that. Uh, would you rather do all that stuff and have all six of us there? Yeah. No, no, no. You hesitated. <laughs> you hesitated. Thanks a lot. Yeah. So, you know, that's one of those things. I remember one year I was going to be all by myself on Christmas Eve, and I mean totally <laughs> alone. What year was that? I know. I was trying to remember where you guys. Oh, that was the first year we were married. Was that it? Mm -hmm. Because David and Shayla, I think they were going to Shayla's folks, and I was going to be all by myself on Christmas Eve. I've never been by myself on Christmas Eve. And I thought, Oh my goodness, all of my, and Christmas Eve is our Christmas day, basically. That's the big deal for us. So what I did was, that was when they first started opening up, uh, Kmart and Walmart would be staying up late on Christmas, open up late on Christmas Eve. Usually they close about four, but they started staying up later at this point. So I went on Christmas Eve to Kmart. And I bought me a wallet. I needed a wallet really bad. And I was so excited shopping. And about, I bought me a wallet. I had a jug of, a jug, it sounds like I'm drinking. I had a jug, a whole, I bought me a whole two liter of Pepsi. I made it my favorite dip that I love and nobody else in the family ever eats. So I don't make it at Christmas all the time. And a bag of chips. I went home. I had more fun. I put my jammies on. I had my jug of Pepsi and my dip, and I picked out on Pepsi dip and chips and watched Christmas movies, and I loved it. It was really quiet and peaceful and really nice. So, <laughs> getting lots of likes and loves, Jill. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, yay, guys. Maybe we should have Mondays with Mom. Mondays with Mom, huh? Well, I thought it was Mondays <laughs> with Mike. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Let's see. Oh, you should have seen Michael before the show. I had I had these lights that I put on on the other side of the computer. Well, I just stuck them up really high. And so Michael was testing, trying to see if he could get the screen doubled and this, that, and the other. 
and he's getting this look on the face on his face. And I know Michael well enough now. I thought, okay, he's getting ready to try to tell me something that he thinks is going to hurt my feelings, and he's trying to figure out how do I tactfully tell my mother-in-law that she has a lot of wrinkles and she's ugly. <laughs> That's not what I was saying. That's your <laughs> translation. Just spit it out, Michael. I can handle it. He said, well, uh, uh, you know, for like older ladies now. I didn't trying say to older older ladies. ladies. I said now, ladies. Older ladies. Old ladies now. They sometimes prefer to have those lights a little bit lower because it doesn't. Well, um, well, it doesn't quite show up. The, well, you know the the black stuff and the wrinkles. It doesn't quite show that up so much. <laughs> I was laughing. He, he's worried he's going to hurt my feelings. I, I just know? said ladies usually prefer to have lights more in front of them than over the top, so it doesn't cast <laughs> <Yeah>. shadows. That <laughs> so it doesn't show all the garbage on their faces. Hey. <laughs> That's not what I said. I was so tactful. I should have recorded it. <laughs> I, I just get so tickled because I could see his mind working. How do I say these words just right? <laughs> wow. Wait, what? What did you say? Oh, okay. Uh, do I need to go somewhere particular? Okay. Did. What, did we lose all of our people and nobody me. has any questions? Taurus, Char whispered to me, let's wrap it up. Because she can't oh. breathe. <laughs> okay, so if you guys, I hope you enjoyed Mom, but we have um, traditional Thanksgiving recipes on our website. Michael put the link in there one last time. These are all your basic recipes, and guys, these are guaranteed. They are in Dining on a Dine Cookbook, and they are very good. They really are the best recipes. Guaranteed. We have lots of details how to make them, too, on the website okay. and everything. And um, <clears throat> you can get our cookbook on our website. Oh, oh tell Tara's, I totally forgot. Tara's not doing so well. Oh. We have a Thanksgiving on a dime ebook I've been meaning to promote for like the last three weeks. I forgot about that. Oh, you know what? I'm going to share the link that says find all of our books. And if you want to see it, it's at that same spot. It's like the second book down on that page. Because we go into a lot of elaborate <laughs> detail of things to do like what I was talking about tonight, but even more so. It has tons of detail well, in there. Six bucks. I looked at Amazon because we have a Kindle version there, and um, it has a lot of really good reviews. So people apparently yeah, have liked people really it. really like so, it. So it's... People don't realize our little extra books like that are just jam-packed with stuff. Like, it's stuff you don't even hear on Pinterest. As a matter of fact, I always say, I think we were Pinterest, Pinterest before it was, you know, developed because we have so many tips and ideas in those books on that type of thing, so... Yes, so it's only like five ninety five, I think, and... <coughs> Go check it out because it's got some really good ideas in it. So, Before we go, one thing I was going to say. For those of you who are accustomed to us tossing it over to Go and Batty on Wednesdays, they're not on tonight. Yes. So just so you know, that's why we haven't mentioned that. So, All right, guys. I hope you have a good night. I am going to go die on the couch. And if I'm not here on Friday, Mike will probably broadcast dug a hole in the my, <laughs> my funeral in the backyard. She always <laughs> says, dig a hole in the garden and roll me in. Save so, money, huh, Michael? That's the way to have it. She probably wanted to plant zinnias on top of herself so that all the zinnia energy <laughs> can come out. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Bye-bye, guys. I'm sorry I couldn't talk to you tonight, but I'll be talking on the comments. Bye-bye. Yep, we'll see you Friday when Mike's probably going to better be doing something. <laughs> Bye. Oh, Bye-bye. Oh, I'm cutting soap on Friday. Sorry, guys. Okay. Bye. Cutting soap. <laughs> Bye. Ha, ha, ha.